What's up guys, welcome back to some more Atlas news. We've got the patch preview trade functionality um, pre-patch announcement type deal. There's a lot of information here. It's quite controversial. I'm not going to lie, I've just been looking through some of the reactions to it. Uh, it has not gone down well from what I've seen. Obviously it's only a small percentage of people that I'd be able to see, so I don't know what everyone's thinking right now, so leave comments down below and let me know. But Let's go through it. Ahoy Pathfinders, we have set up the sea forts for route control, the markets for trade configurations, and now trade functionality is on the way with the next patch. As a reminder, it is currently scheduled for Tuesday the 10th of November and includes a wipe. Time of the patch is still to be determined. Please check back on this spot and our social channels for any changes or updates to the schedule. The first iteration of trade functionality will introduce virtual shipments only, meaning no tangible NPC trade ships will be created, and all trades that are started will reach its destination market after a certain time. Players can still blockade trades via control of sea forts, in which case a trade will not start if there are no routes it can take to reach its final destination. The automatically generated trade ships that players will be able to impede and attack are still undergoing testing will be implemented later. We are also introducing random events to trade in, and these will appear in the trade log when they occur. It's wild out in the seas, and you never know what can happen. Perhaps your ship sailed into a group of NPC pirates who took some of your stock, or maybe you got lucky and ran into a treasure chest, gaining you some extra gold. Maybe the amateur cook on board accidentally set your ship on fire, so you lost some of your cargo, but inadvertently gained coal. Random events can be negative, neutral or random, so be sure to keep an eye on your trading log or you'll be caught by surprise. Multiple random events may trigger and all random events are virtual and do not get resolved until the end of the shipment. The weights of several resources have been adjusted in relation to the trade system as well. Economy. The trade system will be the main way of players to generate gold. We will be starting with very conservative numbers with the gold generation rate from trades and will adjust the numbers accordingly. With trade functionality now in play, we have increased the cost of building ships. Players will need to trade consistently and or control sea forts to build income for ships. Acquiring top tier ships is going to take some work and we are expecting to see a lot of sloops at the beginning. The first schooner and subsequent ships should feel like a big deal and a job well done. Whale ships, the dam, shipwrecks, float sam, and treasure maps are other avenues of gold as well. Re upcoming wipe. As noted, the next patch will include a wipe with the introduction of trade functionality. The wipe will also resolve some previous issues such as interference from the old sea fort structures and problems with claiming sea forts on Lawless. We also received some questions about whether the wipe would change the map or multipliers for the new season. We would like to start off by clarifying with our recent change to our direction development. We are shying away from the defining official seasons while we are still in early access. In the summer, we announced that we are renewing and essentially resetting the Atlas development journey. Since then, we have come to realise that we cannot expect to have seasons. While we are still shaping out the core gameplay mechanics, at this stage we will be rolling out changes continuously and wiping whenever it becomes necessary. Meanwhile, we will consider how we may want to run seasons when it makes sense. The upcoming wipe will not introduce any map or resource distribution changes, at least not right away. We are still looking at how we want to change and balance the distribution of resources. We like the idea of having hotspots, contested locations, and want to bring more of that into the gameplay. Once the NPC trade ships are in, it will also create opportunities to attack the trade ships that are carrying rarer goods. The changes to resource distribution will be happening later in this cycle. This means that the value of certain locations can and will change until we strike the right balance and it will mix up whatever the current circumstance at any time may be. Base multipliers rates will also remain the same. There are no planned changes at this time, although we will likely look into readjusting them later down the line. Private servers. A wipe is not necessary for private servers, but is recommended, as there may be outstanding issues that a wipe would resolve. 
If you had already added the original sea fort structure to your map, be wary that adding sea forts now may cause unintended changes as well. Sea forts are also necessary to enable trading on your server. Trading is set up so that if there are no sea forts in the server, it is considered an open route and there is no tax when passing through. If the original destination market is on the server with no sea forts, the trip will be virtual. In other words, trading is allowed for everyone if there are no sea forts on a server. Unless you desire to add the gameplay surrounding the sea forts, it is not a requirement for the trade system. Tentative changelog. Please note that this is only a preview for the next patch and may be incomplete. Final patch notes for the live build may differ and will be reposted once it goes live. Now brace yourself for when we get to the uh, ship costs if you don't know what they're going to be already. My god, it's caused uh, quite some backlash. Crafting. Reduce the output of crafting gunpowder from 2 to 1. Reduce the output of crafting blasting powder from 2 to 1. Market. Update the structures set in on the market to be reinforced stone. This results in increased damage resistance. Bug fix added back the ability to connect markets to warehouse via interaction wheel. They should still all connect if placed near each other. Resources adjusted way of many resources reduced the way of gold by 50%, gems by 75%, wood by 40%, sap by 60%, crystal by 60%, uh, and metal by 33%. Increased the weight of oil by two times, fiber by eight times. Flint by 2.4 times, carotenoid by 5 times, gunpowder by 1.5 times, organic paste by 2 times, fire gel by 2.5 times, and blasting powder by 2.5 times. Sea forts reduce the radius inside sea forts for claiming from 2.5 to 1.5 meters. Increase max tax rate for sea forts from 30% to 50%. And here we go, here's the big thing that's really caused a lot of anger. <laughs> Increase gold cost from crafting ships. Schooner from 50 gold to 5,000 gold. Brigantine from 250 to 25,000 gold. Galleon from 500 to 50,000 gold. I will get back to this and talk about my thoughts on that. Warehouse reduced placement prevention radius of warehouses from 800 to 600 meters. This increases the amount of warehouses that can fit in an area by about 75%. We're looking at how to best allow multiple companies to have warehouses nearby in the future. Reduced transport radius of warehouse from 500 to 450 meters. MISC, uh, increase the max stack size of cannonballs from 50 to 100. That's quite nice, actually. Bug fix. Explosive barrels can no longer deal damage in free ports. Uh, final note, same as always, it's early access. Expect changes, blah, 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 blah. Happy sailing Atlas crew. Oh, boy. So, uh, there's a lot in there. And obviously, let's get straight on to the gold costs of ships. Get This can change. Like they did say, this isn't set in stone until the wipe, etc. But we've got to talk about the increased gold for crafting ships. And yes, that is for crafted ships, i.e. the ships you build in your own personal shipyards. You are going to have to stump up the additional gold cost on top of the resources. Um, I see in some of the comments on the post, the original post, uh, people asking if that was for ships for gold. Or whether this is for crafting yes it is for crafting so just for a schooner is going to be 5,000 gold um, the galleons 50,000 now that's a lot of gold to a lot of people if you're on a massive tribe you're going to well to be honest probably going to um, think it's not that bad but for most people playing Atlas in small tribes or solo or just with a couple of friends, etc., that's not good. It, they're going to have to make some big decisions on how they want to play the game. Um, the Galleon, I, I don't actually think that's ridiculous. Although I will say that right now on PvE, for example, you can buy a custom-built mythical Galleon from Crimson Crew. And obviously Shu builds them for... Um, around 30,000 gold um so yeah to stick a 50 grand price tag on the on just any galleon built in your shipyard is a little bit harsh but um yeah a galleon is the biggest ship the strongest ship in the game 
it should have a lot of value at the moment. Every man and his dog can have a galleon really quickly. Um, when I've had friends start playing Atlas, they have always gone, yeah, let's build a galleon when they've not even dinged level two yet. So, yeah, I think that's good that the galleon has been given a lot of worth. Now we can talk about the price and that however you want, but... You know, 50 grand is doable. It's going to take you a lot of work, but you can get it as a small player. If you're in a big company, again, 50 grand, you can get that with a little bit of uh, playtime, basically, if you're doing maps or whaling, etc. Well, maps, really. Um, still not quick money. Like, you're going to have to put some effort into getting it. But, yeah, um, I think it's going to have a kind of mixed response. Although I do think the majority of people are going to think that's very steep. And yeah, I think 50 grand is a bit steep. But um, again, it adds massive value to the Galleon. The one that I don't like, or the two I don't like, is the Schooner for 5,000 gold. Again, a lot of people can go, oh, that's not nothing at all. Well, if you're just getting into the game, you're in a small company again, you're going to have to decide who's having a Schooner. Because you're not all going to get a Schooner straight away now. Um, and if you all were planning on going off doing different stuff, then you're going to have to go without, or someone's going to have to go without. Unless you all want to jump in one ship. Um, Brigantine, it, you know, 25 grand again, not too much. You should be, you know, when you're getting a Brigantine, uh, quite a bit into the game. Not necessarily really far in, but, you know, you're going to be a few hours in at least. Um, and, yeah, so it adds value to it. You know, Brigantine's the go-to ship. I think 25's a bit much. Um, looking at it from a small company or a solo player... I get why they're doing it. I, I think maybe... Now, even 15 grand is going to sound like a lot, but I think 15 grand wouldn't be unreasonable. It's going to be a few maps to get one. I think that's fair enough. Uh, bearing in mind, again, like if you want to get a mythical one, you're going to have to go and get all the different resources and cough up 25 grand. Um, my biggest issue, like I said, is the schooner at 5,000. Yes, you can get 5,000 gold pretty quick if you know what you're doing, but you're going to have to spend quite a few hours doing it. If you're on PvP, I think that's going to cause a lot of issues for new players or people just starting out into the Atlas when they've you know, rolled a new character or whatever. And if they're not in a big company already that can just give them money or give them a ship. The biggest problem is going to be on the wipe. And also now it's going to... I think this is going to set in stone large companies. Like large companies now are going to go from strength to strength. Um, they're going to hold everything and it, you're not going to, as a small company or solo player, going to have any look in on getting an island now because you're going to have to make sure you've got money for ships. Um, so how are you going to go and secure an island on the wipe when you're going to need gold to get a ship? So all the money you're going to be getting is a small tribe or whatever. You're going to be pumping into your flag to keep hold of your island if that's what you want to do. Um, so you're not going to have any spare gold to build a ship. Um, if you were planning, like I know quite a few people do, to send someone off to claim an island, everyone else goes off and collects gold, you're going to have to you know, be careful with your gold and decide what the best way to go around distributing it is going to be. You're going to have to, like I said earlier, sacrifice who's having a ship. You're not all going to have a ship straight away. I don't know what this is going to do to the game. I really don't know. But all I know is... Everything I've seen so far has been massive backlash. People are not happy with this. I don't understand what they're trying to do anymore. Um, and I keep saying it. I've held off saying it in videos, but I've seen loads of people and loads of people I speak to that play the game always say it's like they don't play the game. And um, I don't think that's an unreasonable assumption. <laughs> It really is starting to look more and more like they don't play the game. Um, again, no mention of explosive barrels other than that they've now made it so they no longer deal damage in free ports. You know, there's much bigger issues to be sorted out. And yeah, I don't know where they're going really. And the, <laughs> like I said, all these new issues or different issues going on and things that have been around for ages that need addressing. And then they've added in random events for trading, which I don't see what the point in that is. Why Why is that a thing? I mean, I, I don't I don't understand. Like, you, they're not fixing things that need fixing, and 
you know, you've got people giving all sorts of negative feedback and saying about, you know, we want more content, you need to fix explosive barrels, the game needs better balancing, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, it's early access, things have got to be built and changed, whatever. But then they've introduced this new random feature. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get what they're doing. I don't, where's the prioritization? The new trade system is coming in, but it's only going to be virtual. So to start with, we're... You're going to be able to send out your trade ships, but they're going to be virtual and not going to be in game. So, does that mean when they make the physical ships appear in the game, are we going to need another wipe? Like, they've said in the upcoming wipe part that they mentioned that, you know, they're going to, they want to move away from the idea of seasons, which, by the way, wasn't them. They took that from the community. It was the community saying, oh, yeah, that was season one, season two, season three. That was based on the different wipes that we've had since the game came out and the devs run with it last season for some reason which some people didn't agree with i didn't see what the fuss was about and people moaning about it i don't think it really matters to be honest but um yeah they want to move away from that and they're saying yeah you know because you know we want to act more like an early access game with more regular wipes and things like that so are we now going to see a wipe when they release the actual physical trade ships because that would be a massive issue to a lot of people. Because how long have we got like, to invest in this? Like, How much effort should we put in? They don't seem to realise the amount of hours that people put into Atlas already as an early access game. Like, People put in thousands and thousands of hours. And now we're being told you don't. we don't know when there's going to be wipes. And again, I'm for wipes, by the way. I've said this many times. I think there should be wipes. But now they're acting like with this post, it seems like that they're going to be wanting to wipe whenever there's a, a major feature release. Well, what's that going to entail? Like, What are they going to count as a major release? Like I said, so we've got a wipe coming up to bring in a trade system, but we're only going to have virtual trade system. So when they release the physical trade system, does that mean we're going to have to have a wipe to implement the physical ships? and to implement the trade routes, etc., that the ships are going to follow in-game. Um, this, this post has really asked more questions than it's given answers, or given us more questions than given answers kind of thing. Um, there's loads of stuff there. It's all pretty standard. Yeah, they've increased and reduced some weights. I think that's actually kind of handy. Um, they've changed the... Output when you're crafting gunpowder and blasting powder, which kind of makes them a little bit more expensive, but I don't think it's going to make a great difference to how easy it is to get them things. Not that it really matters. I think, like most people are crying out for, they need to balance the explosive barrels. That seems to be the big thing in PvP. I've recently been, or I see a comment saying about how, um, and I'm sorry, dude, if you see this, I've, I've forgotten, I haven't got the comment to hand, but someone done tests on the explosive barrels, and apparently they're not too overpowered. It just needs the rest of the game to catch up with it, and yeah, it's not as bad as it sounds, but most people don't agree with that, and they want to see a, a fix to the explosive barrels. But um, yeah, like I said, there, there's so much going on, and they don't seem to be making anything clearer like this is them adding stuff into the game and they're going to tweak it obviously i guess but this is the big one the increased gold for ships i i don't know what i feel about it i think 25 grand for brigantine's too much and obviously i think the schooner's too much um the schooner's the early game ship like you can't do anything with a sloop it's so slow like you can't explore with it really i mean you can but it takes forever people don't want to spend hours sailing around in a crappy little sloop um at like four knots or whatever it does something silly the schooner is what everyone tries to get into and some people jump to a brigantine and i think that's fair enough like make it more expensive so a brigantine is a like stage of the game you get to and the stage after that's the galleon i get why you would make them expensive but a schooner like I mean, all right, you can actually do the entire game with a schooner, by the way. Like, you can solo Kraken with a schooner, for example. You need them at the start of the game to generate gold. It's really, really hard to get gold for sleep. I think people will be put off by that. Um, I'm not saying it's not doable, by the way, before anyone tries to throw that at me. Like, it is completely doable in a sleep. You can go tame a bear and put it on a sleep and go do some maps and earn some gold. But um, I agree with what people are saying. Like, the this, this sleep's ridiculous everyone wants a schooner 
I mean, I'm not saying make the schooner free. I mean, maybe make it, um, you know, 500 gold, say. Something like that. That's still not a lot. It's like a couple of really crap maps or one crap, like slightly less crap map. Um, and I, I still think people would feel hard done by with that. But 5,000 gold for a schooner on top of the resources. Bearing in mind, you before you get to that, you've got to put down a shipyard so you're probably going to be looking for somewhere to start a little starting base put your shipyard down like you're already like going hours and hours into the game by this point um and then you've got to cough up five grand like I said what if you're rushing to get an island before like while everyone else is trying to grab an island before the big companies grab all the islands like you can't you're not gonna be able to do that now so like i said it's gonna really set on a pedestal the large companies so yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. There's a lot in there, and I've probably forgot to mention some stuff here. My thoughts, but obviously the the wipes and the um, gold there is the two big issues that everyone's going to be talking about. Really, like I said, I don't know about the wipes. Obviously, we know the wipes come in, and I've said before I'm for wipes, but they're really making it sound like we we can expect a lot of wipes. And my question is, how long? do we have before wipes and i know they can't answer that they're going to say they can't answer that because we don't know what development's going to happen etc but again people put thousands of hours into this in my opinion now this is telling me don't play official if i'm honest don't play official servers that's what it says to me because you've got no guarantee with the effort you're going to put in as to what you're going to like how long you're going to have um that's just my opinion. I don't know what other people think. Again, let me know what you think to that. Let me know what you think to, well, anything you want in this, obviously, but the main one being the ship, the gold price of the ships and the wipes. Again, the backlash is more people saying they don't want to play anymore. They'll come back when the game's released or whinging about the devs, etc. And really, really kicking off about this, the uh, price of the ships. So. Yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell so you don't miss any more Atlas news and obviously my other video content and also my live streams. And if you'd rather watch live streams on Twitch, Moshman Gaming on Twitch, give me a follow on there. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think down below and I'll see you next time.